Hey everyone, today we are looking at Acts chapter 10. But before we can dive deep into Acts chapter 10, we actually need to rewind all the way back to Acts chapter 1. You'll remember in Acts chapter 1 that the disciples after Jesus' death and resurrection have been hanging out with Jesus and he's been teaching them many things. And the disciples approach Jesus and they have this question about when Jesus is going to restore the kingdom of Israel. Um, and as we looked at last week, Jesus is not interested in answering that question. Uh, so he doesn't. Instead, he says, that, that's not for you to worry about. Um, mainly because it's kind of the wrong question. But he says, the thing that you ought to do, the thing that you ought to be preoccupied on, is being my witnesses. And then Jesus goes on, he says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus wants his disciples not to be preoccupied when this world, uh, or at least their world, is going to be fixed and made right again, but he gives them a mission, a purpose, a job to do, and that is wherever they find themselves, that they are to be his witnesses. They are the ones that, to go out and spread the good news that Jesus has risen from the dead. And they are to do it in these sort of ever-expanding rings of influence. So you remember that uh, Jerusalem is the sort of the capital city of Israel and a place where um, the disciples and Jesus spent a lot of their time. And this is where we find the disciples at the beginning of Acts, that they are in Jerusalem and they are to be his witnesses there. Now, um, we, we do see exactly that. You flip the page to Acts chapter 2, and uh, the disciples receive the Holy Spirit, and they begin speaking in other languages, and Peter gets up, and he preaches this sermon uh, in Jerusalem, and many people from all over the world uh, hear uh, what the good news about Jesus is, in their own language, and many of them um, put their faith in Jesus and become followers, um, which is really exciting, right? Now, this seems really good, and the disciples continue to uh, live in and preach in Jerusalem. They are fulfilling that part of the bargain, but there is a problem. They haven't expanded any further out than that first circle. So remember, Jesus is saying, you are to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So the question is, what do those things mean? Well, Jerusalem is obviously where the disciples chose to take up residence, uh, at least in the very beginning of their mission. It's the center of Israel, the capital city. But what is Judea and Samaria? Well, Judea is the um, what we might constitute as the, the country at the time. So it wasn't called Israel um, because the Romans had invaded Israel and conquered it and sort of redivided it. And so the new name um, was called Judea. So Judea is kind of like the region or the, the country uh, of what we might say is Israel, more or less. Uh, and so Jesus says, you're to be my witnesses in your, in your city, in your country, and then Samaria is the, uh, again, used to be part of Israel, had been separated out as a sort of separate entity, but again, sort of like your closest neighbor. We might even say that here, that our Samaria might be New Zealand or, um, I don't know, Indonesia or something. Um, and then the ends of the earth means everywhere else. That's pretty obvious. So the problem here up till Acts chapter 9, really, the end of Acts chapter 8, is that the disciples had not gone past uh, the, the boundaries of Jerusalem. Their ministry had stayed there, um, and they hadn't gone out to anywhere else, not to the rest of Judea or Samaria, let alone to the ends of the earth. Uh, and then in Acts chapter 8, this persecution happens. Um, where the church for the first time gets persecuted, and, and we are told when this happens, then the church whew, starts to scatter. And this is where we find Peter in Acts chapter 10. 
He is now on the border of Judea. He is in a place called Joppa, which is the same place where Jonah tried to get on a boat to flee from God in, uh, in the prophetic book of Jonah. Um, and so he's on the very fringes of the country, of the, the edge of uh, Judea. And here, something outstanding happens. Um, even, even here, he hasn't uh, sort of gone beyond the borders of what God is calling him to do. And it takes God sending him this dream or this vision, th this weird picture of all these animals being lowered down from heaven on a sheet and God saying, take and eat. And Peter originally protests. He says, no, God, I, I can't eat anything that's unclean. I'm a Jewish person. This is what you've called me to do. And three times he has the vision and he doesn't quite understand what it means. Until, as soon as it's over, he gets a knock on the door. And lo and behold, there are three men who represent um, this centurion, this Roman guy named Cornelius, who lived, again, sort of on the outskirts uh, in another port town called Caesarea. And this man had, he was a God-fearer. He believed in the God of the Jews. He prayed. He gave generously to the poor. And uh, he wanted to know more. And so he had a vision telling him to go find Peter. So he goes, sends men to find Peter. Peter eventually uh, goes back and visits with Cornelius. And he realizes what the meaning of his dream is. That Cornelius represents someone who is unclean. That he's not supposed to associate with um, and have no relations with. And he's an enemy, right? He's a, he's a soldier working for um, the, the country that invaded your country in the first place. And yet Peter sees that him and his whole family and everyone there are gathered around waiting to hear every single word that comes out of Peter's mouth. They want to know more. So Peter preaches a sermon about Jesus and the whole household, everybody in it, this whole crowd of people that had assembled, put their faith in Jesus and they were baptized. And Peter then says, now I know that there is no delineation, there's no differentiation. I know what my dream meant. I know why God even sent me here. Because God is calling us to be his witnesses everywhere. Not just in our hometown, um, but in our, in our country, with our neighbors, and to the ends of the earth. And it takes um, Peter having this crazy dream it takes this man sending some representatives to go visit Peter to get him out of that comfort zone in order to preach uh, the gospel. And, uh, and Peter's sort of, yeah, his, his fear maybe of leaving Jerusalem, maybe there's a bit of, uh, of hating your enemy, maybe a bit, a bit of racism because these are people from different races as well that God breaks down all of these borders so that Peter can go and spread the gospel. See, God is not interested in the boundaries that we create uh, or the comfort that we want to live in. Um, but God wants, just like Peter uh, and just like the rest of the disciples, he wants us to be his witnesses. We don't know the times or dates when Jesus is going to come back, but God has given each of us a mission. And that is to go and spread the good news about Jesus everywhere. And so the question to leave us with is, um, how are you doing that exactly? How are you being God's witness in the place that he's put you, your hometown, your Jerusalem? Are you doing that well? Secondly, how is God um, giving you opportunities to be a witness um, to your wider neighbors um, your country, those within your country or around, how are you being an example? Or are you living in your comfort zone like Peter was? And then lastly, how can we be God's witnesses to the ends of the earth? Uh, God doesn't want us to just you know, keep living in our own little bubble where everything is nice and neat and comfortable and fits in boundaries and borders that we have created, but God wants to use us to spread his word all over the globe. Um, and in doing so, just like Peter, when we step out and say, God, uh, I, I, I don't mind you breaking down all of my boundaries and borders and comfort levels, 
we see uh, a harvest being reaped. So the challenge for you today is to be God's witnesses, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. See ya.